Welcome. It's nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I am Lydia Odije Ochi. We thank you for joining us. President Mohamed Buhari has directed law enforcement and related government agencies in the country to carefully study and implement effectively the report of the Senior Executive Course 40 of the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies. The report, which is a product of presidential mandate to the Institute a year ago, provides a critical pathway towards checkmating the militating challenges of security in Nigeria for sustainable peace and prosperity. The Senate Committee on INEC has expressed satisfaction with the level of preparedness by the electoral body in Kaduna State ahead of the 2019 general elections. Benny Adams reports. The electoral umpire has blown the whistle signaling the commencement of campaigns. Shortly before that, INEC in Kaduna conducted display of voter register, an exercise seen as a vital tool to the success of the polls. In addition to this, issues bordering on the successful use of the card reader, the rate of PVC collection, and the level of interface between INEC with various security outfits, local and international observers are key, hence the visit by the Senate Committee on INEC. So what do you do with these card readers that are not functional? Members of the Senate Committee on INEG, led by the chairman, Dr. Suleiman Nazifi, were taking round on assessment of the level of preparedness. This is the fourth time that the National Assembly is working on the Electoral Act just to ensure that uh, everything is in order. We've allayed all fears. We have uh, interacted and collaborated with uh, all critical stakeholders with the view of getting their views and ensuring that uh, uh, we do what would be in the best interest of this country and to ensure free, fair and credible election for 2019. The election materials and so on is coming on and you know we have just concluded display of voters register which is the bedrock of the election. According to INEC election timetable, the presidential and national assembly election come up February 16th while the gubernatorial and state houses of assembly are slated for March 2nd, 2019. In Kaduna, Benny Adams, NTA News. Still on the 2019 general elections. As the campaigns for the presidential and national assembly elections commence, INEC is closely monitoring the behavior of all the political parties to ensure that the campaigns are issue-based. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu stated this in a meeting with presidential, uh, residential electoral commissioners in Abuja. Mir Ogidi has more. These are interesting moments in the political process as the dance floor is open to all with the primary aim of disseminating their party manifestos and policies to sway voters. And it is now four days when some political parties put on the engines for their campaigns and the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, being an unbiased umpire, seems impressed with the takeoff. The commission is committed to closely monitoring the campaigns pursuant to our statutory mandate and to ensure compliance with the extant laws and regulations. We are pleased that the focus in the last few days since the commencement of the campaigns has been on policies rather than personalities. We sincerely hope it remains this way. In this all, are the resident electoral commissioners across the country to give their report cards on the level of collection of permanent voters' cards, how to deal with vote buying and selling, as well as other issues on election administration. The recruitment and training of election duty staff discuss the ongoing review of the framework for voting by internally displaced persons, the IDPs, explore additional assistive measures in support of persons with disabilities in the electoral process, examine additional ways to safeguard the sanctity of the ballot against the menace of vote buying at polling units. For the Federal Capital Territory, the area council elections will hold on the 2nd of March 2019, along with the governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Mie Ogidi, 
NT News. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu in a meeting with resident electoral commissioners in Abuja. Moving on now, politicians are advised to focus on issue-based campaigns to advance democratic culture in building a stronger nation. This is the standpoint of discussions on ATA's current affairs program Tuesday Live, where they stress the need to stop hate speech and campaigns that overheat the polity. Talatu, Talatu. As RK reports. I beg of you to think very seriously before casting your vote. Politics are guided by rules that we highly cherish by the nation's founding fathers in advancing democratic culture in the pursuit of national interest. We have learned to fight for the freedom of the individual. Would you like to substitute this so that a number of opportunist black imperialists will rule you and oppress you? We believe in the young children of today. We are prepared to borrow something from the past, but not prepared to go back to the past and then think of the future. One significant thing about the symbol of the action group is that it symbolizes what you want and what I want. Yes, the good old days where the party's interest be that of NPC. Or do or talk cost you have to it's just to directly that this is me I'm going to do it quite different from the other party that is there well the campaigns for the presidential and national assembly positions have commenced in line with the electoral timetable and political gladiators strongly believe it is time to get it right in the words of President Muhammad Buhari, we have no other country than Nigeria. Let us not set it ablaze because of politics. Any politician who will not bring about unity should be voted out. Let's take a cue from Mr. President. From the time he came to date, he had never said, look, go and vote for everybody in APC. What he says, allow Nigerians to vote for their of their choice. We need one thing in this country, a credible and independent institution to monitor the politicians and the voters, to discourage them from selling their votes. So as Nigerians count down to the 2019 general elections, the interest is to uphold the nation's unity through right actions for advancement. Talati is a week. Thanks, Talatu. Now, from the National Assembly, the House of Representatives has directed its Committee on Police Affairs to investigate alleged constant deployment of commissioners of police to Bielsa State. This followed a call by Bielsa State Caucus at the House of Representatives. Coming on the matters of urgent public importance, the caucus alleged that eight police commissioners were deployed and redeployed to and from the state within a period of three months, which according to members of the caucus, has created a feeling of insecurity among residents. Wednesday's plenary saw the passage of four bills at second reading, two of which were forwarded from the Senate for concurrence. Lagos launches 5,000 coordinators for President Muhammad Buhari. Elizabeth is standing by in Lagos to bring us details of this and other stories. Hello, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Lydia, and thanks for joining us in Lagos. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, has challenged students to make effective use of technological advancements to build a better Nigeria. He stated this while delivering a lecture at the 32nd Convocation of Yaba College of Technology, Lagos, Dotun Ogunyemi, reports. Understanding the importance of technology is a must for the young as well as senior citizens. It has formed a major part of human lives and activities. In other words, technology has no doubt changed the world's perspective, how people live, interact, 
learn, transact businesses, defend a nation, and improve healthcare. Technology has created opportunity for growth, and innovations abound within the ICT sphere in Nigeria. It is against this premise that the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashula, advised graduates of Yaba College of Technology to focus on developing new technologies. Artificial intelligence and sensors. This is the world into which you are graduating. But no matter how much progress you then think has been made, there is still room to do a lot. To drive industrial growth and by extension economic inclusion to create jobs and to create prosperity. This really is the heart and the substance of technology and the pursuit of knowledge. The minister said while developments in the generation and distribution of power is improving, storing electricity remains elusive. He therefore challenged these young scientists to develop a means of storing electricity as government has invested in automated meter reading machines to address electricity billing problems. The lecture had as its topic sustainability of technological advancement, a key to industrial growth and revolution. In Lagos, Dotson Ogunemi, NTA News. A 5,000-man grassroots coordinator for the re-election of President Muhammad Buhari and his running mate, Professor Yemi Oshimbajo, has been inaugurated in Lagos, Doing Dia reports. It was one of the largest gatherings of its kind since the flag of, of the grassroots mobilization for President Muhammad Buhari's re-election in the forthcoming 2019 poll. Chief host is the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola. The achievement of the President Muhammadu Buhari led administration, according to him, is such that weighs any other in the past years. President Buhari has inaugurated an infrastructure development fund to ensure that those roads, Lagos Ibadan, Second Niger Bridge, Abuja to Kano, will never suffer from funding problem again. We are also constructing houses in 34 states. We are also constructing hmm, 90 substations and transmission stations, 90 across Nigeria. The 5,000 coordinators are to mobilize at the world levels across the state with a mandate to deliver over 5 million votes to the All Progressives Congress in the various polls come 2019 in Lagos, doing DIA and the news. Two Nigerians, Ayogo Great James and Ifewa Moses, who allegedly smuggled more than 1,000 more than 1,500 palm action rifles into the country have been denied bail by the Federal High Court sitting in Lagos. Justice Salut Sage refused to exercise discretion on the bail application on the basis of national security. Viera Chimuba has details. The two accused persons, Ayogo Great James, Ifewa Moses, alongside an oil company, Great James Oil and Gas Limited, illegally imported 1,570 pump action rifles into the country from Istanbul, Turkey. They were also alleged to have altered bill of lading and customs from M in smuggling the rifles into the country. The Attorney General of the Federation had arraigned them on eight-count charge bordering on illegal importation of firearms, conspiracy, and forgery. They had pleaded not guilty. Counsel to the defendant, Mahmoud Mogaji and Wale Adesoko, filed bail applications and urged the court to grant them bail. The prosecutor, Julius Ajakaye, from the Ministry of Justice, in his preliminary objection and counter affidavit, vehemently opposed the applications on the grounds that the charges border on national security. In his ruling, 
Justice Sali Yuseidu said individual liberty cannot take precedence over national security. He said the charges against the defendants are very serious ones, with the level of insecurity in the country which ranges from robbery, kidnapping to terrorism. Another suspect, Emeka Ume Festus, also known as Amankwa, previously at large when others were arraigned, was also arraigned today on amended charge. He pleaded not guilty. Trial begins tomorrow. In Lagos, Vieira, Chumuba, NTA News. And that's a contribution from Lagos at this hour. Over now to Lydia in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Many thanks, Elizabeth. The ongoing trial of the former Minister of Interior, Abba Moro, and three others at the Federal High Court Abuja in relation to the 2014 recruitment at the Nigerian Immigration Service has been stalled due to the absence of one of the prosecution witnesses of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Ali Tokoro has details. The former Minister of Interior, the former Permanent Secretary to the Ministry, an ex-director in the Ministry, and Drexel Tech Nigeria Limited are standing trial for allegedly defrauding more than 600,000 applicants of 1,000 Naira each, been processing fees for 5,000 job openings, and the violation of the Public Procurement Act. On resuming the trial, counsel to the EFCC, Elizabeth Alabi told the court that the prosecution has 11 witnesses, and it has so far called nine. And once it calls the remaining two, the prosecution will close its case. She further informed the court that the tenth witness, who is an investigation officer with the commission, is absent, and that stalled the trial. The court could not also hear the motion filed by counsel to the former permanent secretary, James Odiba, seeking the court to release his client's international passport to an Judge Mrs. Namdi Dingba noted that since the motion was not properly served, the defense should do so and the court will fix a date for its hearing. The case has been adjourned to the 4th of next month when the prosecution is expected to call its 10th witness in Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. Now, the Senate has passed at third reading Nigerian Law Reform Commission Bill which tends to reposition its mandate in line with global best practices. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports that the objective is to facilitate effective implementation of its commission's proposal and enhance its performance and other related matters. The Senate received executive communications from President Muhammad Buhari for confirmation of two nominees, Abike Dabiri as chairman, Nigeria Diaspora Commission and Ronke Shokefon as chairman, the Nigerian Deposit Corporation NDIC. Details will come in our subsequent bulletin. As part of continued efforts to improve Nigeria's justice delivery, an annual criminal law review conference has been introduced to give inputs into the justice delivery system of the country. The maiden edition of the criminal law review conference was held at the International Conference Center in Abuja, from where Femi Okewu reports. By the laws of Nigeria, the defense is an integral part of any criminal trial, just as it is with the investigation and prosecution. This annual criminal law review conference is therefore an opening for the nation to know the thinking of the defense and what we need to do to get them on board in our effort to hasten our criminal trials and increase the justice in them. Various speakers at the maiden edition of the conference listed areas that needed either legislative or attitudinal reforms to bring the nation's criminal justice system to the ideal level. The concept of having this conference is a very, very welcome development and I congratulate the convention. So where there is a conflict between the provision of AGRA in terms of investigation or any of those related matters, it takes precedence over any other statutes. Organizers of the conference hope that all arms of the nation's justice system will show respect for each other's input. This is criminal justice seen from the platform of all the stakeholders. 
because we have invited the investigators, the prosecutors, the judges, the justices of court, the senior lawyers, the junior lawyers who appear, the magistrates, and every single stakeholder. And when we rob minds and have a cross-fertilization of ideas. A communique is expected at the end of the two-day conference, which has been attended from across the country. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NT News. The Nigerian army says it is guided by appropriate legal advice in the conduct of its operations to ensure adherence to human rights provisions in line with international best practices. The Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuku Yusuf Buratai said this in a message to the opening ceremony of the Nigerian Army Law Seminar. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the event is organized by the Army in collaboration with the National Judicial Institute, NJI. In a democratic system of government, the rule of law guides human interaction to ensure equality and fair play among individuals and organizations. The Nigerian Army, despite its combatant role and the drive to secure the nation is not left out in the quest to strictly abide by existing human rights laws. Although the military justice system, which is basically rooted on regimentation, has been condemned by human rights activists in the past, I am of the opinion that there have been tremendous improvements as regards the military observing rule of law in its operations in line with global best practices. It is in an effort to develop the capacity of military lawyers involved in the profiling of criminals that the army is organizing this seminar. I will continue to ensure that officers and men of the armed forces of Nigeria adhere strictly to the rule of law. This has been exemplified through the various operations conducted across the country in recent times. So far, we have been able to address petitions and other different kinds of claims against the Nigerian army through the establishment of my red decks, offices in army headquarters and across all the Nigerian army divisions. The seminar is with the theme, the place of the law in counter-terrorism and insurgency operations in Nigeria. From the Nigerian Army Resource Center, Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. It's now time to join Mohammed in Meduguri for more reports. Over to you, Mohammed. Thank you, Lydia, and welcome to Maiduguri. For over a thousand years, the Kingdom of Kanemborno Empire has upheld the tradition of celebrating the birthday of Prophet of Islam, Muhammad, peace be upon him, Maulud Nabi. Although the fanfare often characterized with Maulud celebration has dwindled over the years, the Shehu of Borno, Abokar Ibn Umar Garba al Kenemi, presided over the celebration with the central message of peace and peaceful coexistence at his palace in Maiduguri. Here are details of the report. The celebration of Maulidin Nabi in Meduguri used to be filled with fanfare, visitations, and sharing of food with others until in the last decade when it started dwindling and gradually reduced to offering supplications and recitation of Holy Quran in worshipping places. At the palace of Sheho Borno, Awakar Ibn Umar Garbe al Kenemi, who presided over the celebration, Chief Imam of Borno, Zanan Lesu Ibrahim Ahmad, led other Islamic scholars of Borno Emirate, followed by a long list of kingmakers and traditional title holders in the recitation of the Holy Quran and offering supplications for peace to reign in the country and the world in general. The Kingdom of Khan Borno has been in existence for over 1,200 years without any interruption. Hence, we used to celebrate Eid al Maulud each and every year. The situation was the same at Medina to Islamic Center in Old Maiduguri, where the number of worshippers that trooped to the center was described by many as unprecedented. Speakers at the event dwelt on the need to promote love, peace, and unity the world over. At Zawiya Sheikh Ibrahim Saleh Mosque, the Islamic scholars equally preached the need for every Muslim to reflect on the various lessons of Mawlud and Nabi towards having a better and prosperous society. The enormity of threat to peace and security posed by violence, especially between farmers and herders, cannot be underestimated. It is against this backdrop that the National Committee on Farmers Herders Crisis, in conjunction with Adamawa State Ministry for Livestock Production, organized a one-day consultative stakeholders meeting to find a lasting solution. Simon Asher reports.
The search for enduring peace between farmers and haters in the country is fundamental to the attainment of food security, development, progress, and the achievement of sustainable development of the nation. These are what the stakeholders meeting set to achieve by providing proper understanding on how best to manage the country's diversity for development, especially farmers' haters' conflict, which of recent is making peace elusive between these two important economic groups, which coexisted peacefully over the years. To address the challenges, the meeting profiled solutions to include security, good governance, legal and political considerations, capacity building for farmers and haters, and communication control among others, saying that if all these mechanisms are properly implemented, it will go a long way to bringing lasting peace between haters and farmers. The people have said to achieve lasting solution, there must be committee, this committee should be uh, constituted between the Ardos, who are the pastoral chiefs, and the village heads. Today, we are coming up to look at those seven resolutions on how exactly are we going to, what step are we going to follow to implement those resolutions. Iola, Samon Asha, and Tienius. And now to education. The University of Meduguri, as most institutions and organizations in Borno State, in need of intervention and assistance due to activities of Boko Haram insurgents over the years, is about to add to its existing infrastructure a distance learning center within the institution. This followed the formal agreement reached by the university and a Meduguri based businessman and philanthropist, Mohamed Indimi. Abakar Mawen Musa reports. The Center for Distance Learning at the University of Meduguri has for years been sharing lecture halls and classes with other regular students of the institution to conduct lessons for its students. Though this has not in any way hampered the performance of students, the gesture by the philanthropist to construct an entire Center for Distance Learning will afford the students and lecturers a more conducive learning environment for a better result. Dr. Mohamed Indimi said the project is in line with his desire of contributing his quota to the development of the university. Responding, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Meduguri, Professor Ibrahim Abubakar Jodi, thanked Dr. Indimi for keeping to his promise, which he said will help in changing the landscape of the university. In Meduguri, Abubakar Mohamed Musa, NT News. That ends our contribution. Nationwide continues after this timeout. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism, as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony, are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. Peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTR 2030. As a successor framework for the Millennium Development Goals, the global community rolled out a bigger, deeper, and more encompassing framework called the Sustainable Development Goals, designed to transform our world, lift the poor out of poverty, as well as ensure inclusive and healthy society. On Agenda 2030, we take you on a media trip to the global destination of the future we want. With everyone on board, we focus on the people and their struggle, the civil society and their agitations, the government and hard development effort, the global development agenda, its 17 goals and 169 targets. We bring you all the deliberations, insightful conversations and high-level partnerships on the road to global destination. Agenda 2030, showing on this channel. Agenda 2030, leaving no one behind. I'm Sipasi Olale Kwayodele, 
I'm based here in the Korodu, Lagos State. I'm the founder of Protect to Zone. We train children, youth, and farmers in sustainable agricultural practices to fight hunger and alleviate poverty even in the city. In 2016, joining Empower, I was able to reach more people. Empower gave me the feasibility and um, the, the exposure I needed to scale my organization from where it was to where it is now. Because of the opportunities Empower has actually given me and the facilities um, they provided us, whereby we are going to schools, partnering with the teachers, training the children on sustainable agricultural practices. We have a lot of youth, women and children who benefited from our platform. Even what I'm doing on a small scale has actually brought me a lot of local and international recognition. Currently, I won the Nigerian American Partnership Award and the U.S. Consular General Award based on what I'm doing right from my community here. In recent times, too many votes have been declared void, null, invalid, or spoiled. This is not good for democracy. It is time to make every vote count. Here are a few tips on how to vote. First, when about to vote, identify the political party or candidate you want to vote for. You should not vote for two parties or candidates. It has to be just one thumbprint in the right place on your ballot paper. Make sure you thumbprint on only one space. Your thumbprint must be within the space, not outside like this. Do not allow any spill of ink into another space. Never leave your ballot paper empty. Vote for one party or candidate. Do not write on your ballot paper. Just thumbprint. Do not squeeze your ballot paper once you finish thumbprinting. Place your ballot paper in the box. Enough of void votes. It's time to make your vote count. Vote the right way. This message is from the National Orientation Agency and supported by Osiwa. Welcome back. It's still nationwide. As Nigeria marks the second edition of Noma Day to create awareness on the effect of the disease which affects children under six, the Minister of Health, Isaac Adewale, declares 2018 a year to eradicate the ailment in Nigeria. Basi Taipang in this report takes a look at the causes, prevention and management of this health burden. Noma is a disease that causes progressive destruction of the face. It affects children under six as a result of malnutrition with weak immune system. And its mortality rate is put at 90% owing to the high mortality rates of the disease. The Ministry of Health, in collaboration with partners, marked the day in Nigeria. This is severe disfigurement, uh, particularly of the face. Uh, and this is why it causes shame. And so those who have it would rather go and hide. The children are dumped somewhere. Some of them would die. So unrecorded. But what we are saying as part of this effort is to raise awareness. What is very important to, to note here is that the survivors are very, very small. Majority of the people who contract normal, the children between two to seven years, die before reaching adulthood. Experts say Norma is non-contagious and not caused by witchcraft as believed in some quarters. But can it be treated? Food, even granite, milk, things that are locally available can actually strengthen the immunity. The main signs of the disease medics say include facial swelling, loss of appetite, mouth sores, and cleft. Experts, however, say more research is needed for greater understanding of the disease, for improved prevention, early detection, and treatment. Basi Taipa, NTA News. Still on health, Bauchi State Ministry of Health is set to partner with any organization that will help in reducing the poor health indices on maternal and child mobility. And Commissioner for Health, Dr. Zuera Hassan, stated this during an inception meeting of a project tagged Women Integrated Services for Health, implemented by Mary Stops and funded by UK Aid. Bulak Afsa reports that the project is expected to provide more than 3 million people with, child, with childbirth spacing services. 
Women Integrated Services for Health, WISH, has the goal of contributing to reduction in maternal morbidity and mortality in Nigeria. And the project will support the country's progress towards universal sexual and reproductive health and rights in accordance with Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs 3.7 and 5.6. Commissioner for Health, Dr. Zuera Hassan, who noted with pleasure that the WISH project will enhance acceptability, affordability, availability and accessibility of childbirth spacing services in the state and thereby reduce maternal mortality and morbidity. The challenges that we have mostly in the state is that some women are not aware of these services. So that lack of knowledge that we have such services is actually a challenge to us. So we want them to be aware that these services are available in our primary health care centers, available in our secondary health facilities, and even in our tertiary health facilities. Director of Operations of Marie Stubbs, Mr. Emmanuel Aja, who presents an overview of the project, calls on the Ministry of Health to ensure prompt relief of staff for trainings, full commitment of the project, provide commodities required for the intervention. Mr. Emmanuel outlines the, the estimated impacts of the project to include averting 9,700 maternal deaths in the country, 670,000 additional child spacing method users will also be served in Bauchi. Bulak Afsa, NTA News. Away from health now. In an attempt to complement the efforts of the federal government in ensuring food security through the anchor borrowers' financial intervention to farmers, the Northeast Commodity Association distributed 120 motorcycles and 13 vehicles to extension workers in Adamawa and Taraba states. Simon Ashar reports that the gesture is to assist in fast-tracking the recovery of the loans granted farmers. The Anchor Borrowers Program, a deliberate attempt by the federal government to empower farmers with loans and farming inputs, which is to be paid at the end of the farming season, no doubt has impacted positively in view of the bumper harvest recorded across the nation. However, prompt payment of loans collected by farmers remain a major challenge of the program, hence the official flag of 420 motorcycles to extension workers and 13 vehicles to lead extension officers by the Northeast Commodity Association make us to fast track the recoveries of all loans granted to farmers in Adamawa and Taraba states. Out of these 55,000 farmers, the Central Bank of Nigeria has approved the sum of 9.4 billion naira for us to this part of farmers. How do we make this recovery easier for both uh, officials of NECAS? That is why we got this uh, motor, motor machine and make us for them. In addition, it will also assist the extension workers to reach out to farmers with useful and practical information for improved agricultural production in the country. Memorandum of understanding was also signed between makers and extension officers in regards to the discharge of their responsibilities. In Yola, Simon Asha, NT News. Minister, dialogues on Executive Order 5. Let's join Fatai in Ibadan for details of this and other stories from that zone. Fatai, it's over to, see. Over to you. Thank you, Lydia, and a warm welcome to Ibadan. The science and technology sector is set for a paradigm shift towards a knowledge and innovation-driven economy made possible by the signing of the Executive Order 5 of 2018. Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Bonaya Onu, said this in a message to the Southwest National Dialogue on the Executive Order. Kemi Oshi has the report. The Executive Order Number 5, which directs federal government agencies to engage indigenous professionals and firms in the design and execution of national security projects is a recognition of the critical role of science and technology in driving economic development of the country. The forum is to enable stakeholders dialogue on the critical areas to ensure that the executive order five is correctly implemented. It is important to stress that the present administration 
is determined to create an enabling environment, to mobilize local investment, and attract more foreign direct investment. This actually will now guide and help us in order to make sure that appropriate things are done and as at 1G. And if you look at the economic indices today, you will not actually, we, what is in the country is not actually what was many years back. Participants at this forum are expected to arise with a new vigor to contribute to their quota in pursuing a knowledge-based economy that is driven by science and technology in line with the provisions of Executive have, uh, Order No. 5 in Ibadan, Kemioshi, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Independent National Electoral Commission of your state has received new permanent voter cards of residents of the state. Correspondent Lukman has then reports that the commission in Oyo state has so far distributed 162,265 PVC. With the receipt of the new permanent voter cards, Oyo State has 968,671 uncollected PVC as the country gears up for 2019 general elections. The state has 2,954,720 registered voters tentatively pending any correction that may arise due to lapses observed in the recently concluded display of voters register. The responsibility of INEC is to continue to talk continue to encourage people, continue to ensure that uh, people come, you know, for their card. And we will not be tired of talking, talking, talking. We are going to expand the frontier of our public advocacy. PVC of those seeking for transfer, complaints of loss, and the first cards are yet to be out. The resident electoral commissioner urged residents of the state to begin to collect their permanent voters' card as the commission has 968,671 uncollected PVC. In Ibada, Lukman Hassan, NTA News. In another development to enhance the welfare of its personnel, Inspector General of Police Ibrahim Porto Midris has flagged off police welfare housing scheme at New Ibadan Ife Expressway, Ibadan. Correspondent Rofia Animashan Badmos was there and filing this report. The Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, invites all political parties to a crucial meeting. Scheduled from Thursday, the 22nd of November 2018, the meeting is aimed at creating a level playing ground for all the political parties and avail them with various platforms designed by the NTA to sell their ideas. Venue of the meeting is Post Mortem Hall, NTA headquarters, Area 11, Garki, Abuja, at 10 o'clock in the morning. Come, let's synergize to make the 2019 general elections a successful one. Nigeria, a land of promise, land of potential, rich in oil, arable land, and solid minerals. Yet, hunger, joblessness, homelessness, and poverty are widespread. Over the years, Nigeria has suffered from hospitals without drugs, schools without teachers, and a huge infrastructure deficit. Clearly, we are yet to reach our full potential. And one of the reasons is because people choose bad leaders. Some even sell their conscience for a few thousand naira for 2019 elections. Don't sell your vote. Don't sell your future. Don't buy the people's lives. Vote selling is a crime against yourself. You will spend the next four years paying for it. Vote buying is against the law. Politicians, stop buying votes. People, stop selling your future. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. Fake news which is shared for malicious purposes is a danger to our peace and security in Nigeria. Misinformation as fake news is a serious threat to our hard-earned democracy and promotes hatred and misunderstanding between our communities. We are all responsible for stopping the spread of fake news in its tracks. So, always check the source and credibility of any news item. Say no to fake news. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> you have a um, job, 
Yes. And a black. Yes, sir. Black or white? Yamala. Have I ever eaten white Yamala here before? Yes, sir. Give me Yamala. And a black. Do you have dodo? The two grams. Do Let me have some dodo. I want you to put the meat in the bowl. Shaki. Suku. A body. I like my edo to be very tender. You have stockfish? Yes, sir. Good. Let's have some stockfish. And the catfish. My favorite. And the one that I want. What do you want? Don't mind them. <laughs> You have eggs. I would like six boiled eggs. No eggs. No eggs. But catfish will do. And then rice. Rice and then some salmon. Look. Do you have a guru? Welcome back, and we apologize for that hitch at Ibadan Network Center. Moving on now, Muslims and Christians have been encouraged to bridge the divide and work together to lead social and behavioral change through religious teachings and practice. This will promote developmental initiatives in their communities. This was at a national forum organized by the National Orientation Agency and UNICEF in Abuja for religious leaders. Ruth Aguele has the details. The One Day National Forum is a strategic initiative that prioritizes the potential role of religious leaders to enlist their commitment and extend the orientation to their communities. This will help promote sensitization on exclusive breastfeeding, nutrition guide, immunization, and other related issues with child survival and nation building. To expand and ascertain our scope of community engagement for citizens, especially children and women, which is specific around obscuring desirable knowledge, attitude, and practice. This is something you are also going to carry back to your states and serve the women and children of Nigeria, whom we hope are going to be the final beneficiaries. The partnership between National Orientation Agency and UNICEF is to aid national development to intensify the advocacy and create a larger scope for the well-being of their communities. We need to work together and present something to the international community that will not be a model, the one will be called the Nigerian model. Uh, every Christian leader actually need to tell people clearly about the need for them to be healthy. Because if we are not healthy, we can't do anything. The national discourse is expected to continue by enlightening religious and traditional leaders to advance children's rights through social and behavioral orientation for sustainable growth. In Abuja, Ruth Aguele, NTA News. Now to arts and craft. Issues relating to networking, packaging, branding, and cultural diplomacy in the arts and crafts industry dominated discussions at the investment forum of the 11th edition of the International Arts and Crafts Expo in Abuja. Oinaya Kaluoka reports. A drama piece showcasing arts and crafts as an identity of the people. Globally, the industry generates more than $44 billion annually, creating hundreds of jobs. For Chingwe Ezenwa, who is one of the success stories of the prospect in the arts and craft world, Nigeria must be ready to embrace this sector. You must get ready because the fourth industrialization is coming. There are prospects. Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Otumba Ulushiguro Shangwe, arts and culture is the hidden treasure that must be explored. I've developed three models. We want to build one cultural center in every state of the federation. 
Director News NTA Aliu Bababaro and other discussant noted that culture is fundamental to achieving the diversification drive of the government. The only thing that can be done is our total commitment in order to advance our cultural heritage, our arts and crafts, and give the push and permeate it all across Nigeria in order to promote culture and African civilization. The need for constant training, value presentation, and maximizing the use of the new media were identified as key towards repackaging Nigerian's arts and crafts industry. Uyinaya Kaluoka, NTA News. Our next story from Ethiopia says African leaders have risen from their 11th extraordinary summit in Addis Ababa with far-reaching resolutions that will change the face of the African Union and make it more relevant to today's global politics. Foreign desk correspondent Makut Simon Macham reports. Key decisions reached at this extraordinary summit include the cutting down of the bureaucracy of the African Union by reducing commissioners from eight to six, while the process of appointing the commission's top leadership will also be more rigorous with competence and transparency as the watch world. Similarly, the heads of state agreed to create the African Union Development Agency and retain NEPAD, as well as the African Peer Review Mechanism. But at one time, they wanted it to just be a part of the AU, almost like a department, and uh, lose a lot of, almost you might call it, um, some autonomy, you know. And um, so this was uh, agreed now to, to retain the original structure. Nigeria's intervention at the summit helped in resolving the deadlock over the renewal of the African-Caribbean Pacific Agreement, otherwise known as the post-Cotonou negotiations. Because the important thing is that wherever Africa is speaking, it should speak with one voice and it should be in harmony and consonance with the basic uh, roadmap of the African Union, which is Agenda 2063. So that was accepted. The road to achieving these reforms was by no means easy, as 54 countries had to come to consensus on several issues. Perhaps this shows that Africa is now ready to take its rightful place in the Committee of Nations. From Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, Makut Simon Macham, NT News. Thanks, Makut. Now sports. Ministry of Sports appeals to Ministry of Environment for use of Abuja National Stadium Velodrome as Ministry of Interior Games kicks off Thursday in Kaduna. Let's hear details from Amanzi Marcos on Sports Update. The velodrome at the Abuja National Stadium still remains unused for the purpose it was constructed more than 15 years after. During the 2003 All-Africa Games in Abuja, handball was played at the velodrome instead of synchronized cycling with Amos Adamu, chairman of the 2003 All-Africa Games Organizing Committee, explaining that Nigeria had no athletes and bicycles for synchronized cycling at the time. President Nigeria Cycling Federation Gendo Miniko Masori said they now have the athletes and bicycles to use the velodrome, which has unfortunately been turned into a storehouse for gas stoves. Permanent Secretary.